Hi everyone, today we're going to be working on another page from the um, Johanna Basford um, Weekly Colouring Planner. Now this is a um, picture of Ivy, I'm just going to turn the book around a little so I've got something to lean on so that I can colour a little more easily. So this is, um, just so you know, this is the um, week of January the 11th onwards. So here she is. I'm trying to get her central and zoomed in as much as possible so you can see. Now, this is obviously Ivy from Ivy and the Inky Butterfly. And uh, she's. Uh, this is one of the first pages in the book, actually. But uh, I know that people um, find colouring skin tones and people can be a little bit tricky, especially as Johanna doesn't have loads in her books. So we don't get a lot of practice. But I thought I would have a go and show you how I would do IV, and then it might help you when you have a go at it yourself. Now, to start with, just to say, I tend to use pale flesh colours because that's what I know. Obviously, you might not want to do that tone, but that's how I'm going to do IV. Um, so I'm going to start with light flesh. Now this is a Polychromos, a uh, Faber-Castell Polychromos pencil. Um, I find their flesh tones are quite good. Um, there are pencils. I'm just going to do a light layer of this all over Ivy's um, arms and legs and face. So I'm going to get on with that while I'm explaining. There are some brands of pencil that do specific flesh tones. Um, I know Crayola has a set and um, Black Widows, I think. Is it Black Widows? Is that the right name? Not sure. They have a set too. So there are various um, ones that you can get hold of. Um, this, the, the ones here in the Polychromos, they're quite limited. But um, they're all I have really because my other sets of pencils don't really have um, these sorts of colours. So uh, if I'm using something like Ergosoft, I really am quite stuck. Um, for what to do. So uh, I'm just uh, going to be using these. I'm getting quite low. I'm just going to push it up because her leg, it's very difficult to tell in this bunch of flowers here where her leg actually ends and where her foot begins or where she might be standing. I'm going to do her leg up to here. I'm not going to go below because her leg isn't going to go all the way down here but we've got no feet drawn in so I'm just going to do it to there and what I will do when I um, colour in this bunch of flowers is I might do a sort of hazy background so it will sort of cover up where her feet might be. So I've done that quite dark now, I'm just going to go over the rest in a slightly darker tone and we start to think about where the um, light and shade is going to be. Actually, if we just do her legs first then, don't have to keep moving it up and down. Now, there would be some shadow from these flowers. It might be a little bit darker here. And behind, where this leg is behind, and then where the skirt's going to throw a little bit of shadow just at the top here and here. But also where they cross over. So I'm going to pop some shadow here where her legs are touching. I'm doing this quite gently. I don't want to make a really dark mark at the moment while I'm just planning it all out. Now her knees, we've got these marks and I'm gonna go over those a little bit as well because they would normally stick out a little on her majorly knobbly knee, but so there would be some shadow underneath them. So that's my sort of basics with the legs. And then we're gonna go on to do the arms. Now again, we will look where the shadow is. So under the sleeve, here, there'd be a little bit, and maybe into this elbow, just a bit, and then under here, too. Now, I'm not very used to colouring people, I've only done a few because um, Johanna doesn't draw many people, and uh, so I'm not massively practiced. My techniques are quite basic. But you can see I'm just thinking shading here where the dress and under the chin. Now the face I think can be quite tricky. I think shadow under the hairline a little bit along there. Now what you could do before going in for the face is to have a look at some faces, either ones in your house, look in the mirror or look on a website and see where the shadows actually would lie. Now I'm thinking there'd be a little bit here, there's a little dip in the chin 
and under the nose just a tad. We don't want too much. And then think about the nose, it's not flat, it's going to stick out, so it's going to be lighter along this piece. So we might have a little bit of darker just here and here. Now I haven't actually got a guide picture here with me, so because I'm not in front of my computer today, so I'm just guessing a little bit and hoping that it looks right, which isn't a very good technique. I wouldn't recommend it eyes as well and there we go now what you could do now is to go in with a darker slightly darker tone and darken up the all the areas now in the in the polychromos we have a color called dark flesh which is pink i don't use that as flesh at all we have this color of medium flesh which is slightly pinky beige and we have a cinnamon which is a darker beige colour. Now I tend to avoid the pinks. I don't think my skin is very pink so I tend to use the cinnamon but in a very gentle way. And I'm going to sharpen it first because it's quite a small, it's quite a small picture and um, just go back to where I've done a bit of shading and add a little bit more with this slightly darker pencil. Now, whatever tones of skin you decide to do for Ivy, the shadowing will still be in the same places. <clears throat> so you see, I've just gone over a few bits and I'm just going to try and blend those in a bit by adding a bit more of this lighter, slightly lighter colour. And the same with her arms. I'm not going to do too much here. A little bit there and there, so it might be a little bit just between some of her fingers, and then just blend it in a little bit, go over the top with this one, and just extend the area of colour. This arm looks a bit pale. I'm just going to add a little bit more of this all over. She might be very pale for all we know, and then underneath with the darker one again, the cinnamon. So these shadows are going to be the same as I say, whatever colour skin. I've seen people do all sorts of interesting. I've seen people do ivy with um, purple or, or um, green skin as a sort of Halloween-y colour, which I think is quite fun. And maybe not so much on this picture, but maybe some of the others. Or on the Haunted House picture, which is the free download, Halloween download that Johanna did for us. You may have seen that one. Sorry about the shadowing from my hand here. It's because I'm not at my desk today. It's quite awkward at the moment because the children are at home, schools aren't open. It means that I can't record at my desk in the daytime like I normally would. And uh, I'm just going to use the lighter one to sort of blend that in a bit. So uh, I've got to sit in the kitchen here and the lighting is very, very different. So I've got a light above me, which is behind and above me which is creating all sorts of shadows going on. Now with the leg, do you want to make it look like it's more rounded? You want to put a bit more cut on the outsides of both le both sides of the leg and bring that in a bit to leave a paler bit in the middle and that will make it just look a little bit more rounded and the same on this one. But I think I've fiddled around with her enough now. I'm not going to do more skin at the moment. I'm going to put away um, those pinks. I shall put these to the side for now in case I want to reuse them. And I'm going to do the hair of Ivy and see how that goes. We've also got her eyes to do. Now, they're very, very small. So getting into that small detail is going to be quite tricky. In fact, I'm going to do it now while I remember. And I'm trying to think of what colour eyes to do for Ivy. Just sharpening a pencil. I'm going to do the ultramarine colour and I'm, the iris of the eye is quite big in this drawing. I'm going to try and stick carefully to just doing the iris but now she looks really really blue and I think the centre of the whites of her eyes haven't come out very well. I'm going to use my jelly roll 
I'm going to come in closely, hopefully not, and put some white in the corners, which will hopefully tone down that blue a little bit. And although it's really small, I can zoom in a little bit more, but I don't know if I can actually. The camera doesn't like being really, really close and it's just made her eyes look a bit less dark. You could do the irises slightly less um, less dark as well in a lighter blue, which might help. Of course, you might want to do them blue, um, I mean brown or green or something like that. So hair. Now, I always do Ivy's hair in a similar colour to mine or a bit lighter than mine a sort of brown so I'm going to start with this one which is I can't see number 180 which I can't find my trusted list of colours which I must have dropped on the floor to tell me which one it is I have a feeling this is Bistra but I may be wrong hang on nope Never mind, I shall put it in the description and let you know. But basically it's a very light brown and I'm going to go over the whole of Ivy's hair really gently with this brown to start with. And then we'll add some shadows and shine onto it. Now because it's small, we I'm not going to sort of deal with each section of hair separately because Johanna has split the hair into bits, which is how hair is, of course. But um, I'm going to sort of deal with it as a sort of mass. And also, that gap there could have been background, but because it's small, I'm just going to assume it's hair that's gone down her back. It's just a little bit easier. We do have these thin bits to deal with here. So, with some background behind. I nearly coloured that in, that's the stalks of the flowers that she's holding, not her hair. There we go, so we've got that sort of base layer down and I'm going to pick a slightly darker colour. I'm just looking through, it's quite a nice selection of browns. This is the Van Dyke brown. It's, uh, my browns are getting small aren't they? Now I'm thinking where are we going to have it light and where are we going to have it dark? Now, down here in the parting bit that's going to be dark but this bit here here is going to be catching the light so I'm going to start off with some dark here but not take it too far out this side we've got the flower to deal with though there'll be some shadow under the edge of the flower so I'm just going to pop that in now here I'm just going to go out just to that bit and then wait and I shall come up from the bottom with colour but we're just going to do the shadow under the flower here. Now I'm thinking these bits right at the back are going to be quite dark and shadowy because you've got the shadow of her neck and head. So we're going to put some colour there and up the side of the face and do the same on this side. So just building up some colour there and it sort of helps to give the hair a bit of depth. And then we're going to go in with each end. I'm just going to sharpen here because these are delicate pieces. We're going to just add some interest to these tendrils by making them darker at the ends. And then tapering that colour off. So quite a lot of pressure here near her body. And then reducing it towards the middle so we've got a lighter colour in the centre of the strand. And these are quite small, so you can't do too much, just a little touch, though. There we go. And then the same with these. So a little bit on the ends. Oops. And I'm going to do a bit here, so a little bit coming up from the shoulders. And then here we've got the hair is overlapping these flowers here. and going up. Now I'm going to keep going up a little bit with some colour and just fade it off 
here. Or so we don't get the effect of shine on the top if we leave it all too pale. Ooh, nearly hit my pencil sharpener on the floor then. There we go. So I'm happy with Ivy's hair like that. I've not done too many layers of colour, but I think we can see there's a little bit of shine here and here. If you've got a whole head and hair, you can treat each little bit of hair s separately, and that can be really good fun and take a lot of time. But with this this small one, it's easier just to do it all in, in one sort of go, as it were. Now we're going to deal with Ivy's dress. I won't, I'll try not to push her out of the shot. There we go. And we've got dress, flowers, flower and hair. Now these flowers here I think will be the same colour as those down there because they look the same if you look at the shape of them as if she's just picked them from where they are by her feet. Now this flower I think should match her dress. We've got to decide what colour. Now we've got these little leaves on her dress which I always want to do green because I like green leaves. So I'm going to do that first and then that will help me think about what colour will go with them. And also thinking about the collar and the pockets. Will they be the same colour as the rest of the dress or will they be different? So I'm just sharpening my pencil and I'm going to use the earth green yellowish. Oh, there we go. Hopefully you can see that. And I'm just going to do each leaf. Now, I'm not going to do them in more than one shade or anything. I'm just going to do them in quite a, a defined green colour. Now, we could do her dress green. You know, a darker shade of green. It would sort of make sense with the leaves on there. But I'm not going to do that because I have quite a lot of green planned for the rest of this picture. So I want something that's a little bit different to that. And we also have these green stalks here, so which again, of course, you don't have to do green, but that's my plan. So I want to steer away from green, too much green. So I think I'm going to do Ivy a pink dress. I think it would be pretty. Now in the polychromos, there are quite a few different pinks. And I rather like um, this one, which is called, it says it's dark flesh, but I don't think it is. I rather like the pink colour. And I'm going to go over all the main parts of the dress, not the pockets, with a lightish layer of this. And you'll see how it is quite pretty and pinky. And I'm not going to shade yet. I'm just going to get quite a dark layer over because I want her dress to stand out and uh, I will get a slightly different shade to do the shading as it were and we've got these this little bit on her sleeve as well I'm going to leave that I'm going to match that in with her collar and the top of her pocket whatever colour I decide for that I haven't decided whether I'm going to leave it white which I could do or whether I'm going to just going back over that. Now I've just coloured over the edge of her collar, which wasn't very clever. And I didn't, I knew there was something I needed to bring with me, which was rubber, which I didn't, so we'll just have to leave it. Maybe that will influence me in that I need to do that darker so that it covers it up. Because it was only a little light bit. So I'm just scumbling away trying to get a fairly even colour. Now I've got quite a heavy hand so it's going down quite hard but you um, may not. You may want to do a few layers to get a dark colour or you may decide that you want something a little bit de more delicate and light. So it sort of depends what colour you're doing behind as well, what's going to stand out. Because behind Ivy we have these stars. Now for me, I always think stars come out at night, so do you do a sort of dark nighttime type background here? But um, I don't think Ivy would be out picking flowers in the dark, so I think the stars might be more of a magical symbol rather than saying it's nighttime. So maybe bear that in mind and think about. Um, doing a sort of lighter background colour. I haven't really decided what I'm going to do yet with that. 
So I'm now sharpening a slightly darker colour. This is the Pompeian Red and I'm going to use this um, to do some shading on the dress. So I'm going to start with doing a little bit of a darker bit under the collar or along the edge of the collar where there might just be a bit of shadow. I'm going to ignore the leaves. I'm thinking the leaves are printed on the dress. They're not um, they're not um, loose so they won't have shading around them like these leaves will because they're um, not part of it. And a bit here where her arm is might be quite a lot there and under here you see I think there'd be some shadow. Now you could do your shadow in a grey or brown colour if you wish. I've just noticed there's a bit here between these two stalks and I'm also decided I'm going to do this bit of the pocket in this colour too. I'm just trying to make it look even. There we go. And I've also got this bit, which I will go over with this. I'm just checking, you can see what I'm doing to make that a bit darker. I'm thinking maybe under the pockets, we might just have a little bit of a darker touch. <clears throat> now I'm also going to go around the edge of the dress with a little darker just to give it a bit more texture in the same way we did for the leg really it just makes it look a bit less flat hopefully but just try and make sure you blend that in so that it doesn't look like a line so I'm going to pick up this lighter colour which is the um, dark flesh and just blend it in towards the centre a bit trying to avoid those leaves. So there we go. Now her flower I think would match her dress. So I'm going to take the darker colour which is the Pompeian Red and oh, just pop her down a little bit and do this main part of the flower with this. You can see I'm pressing quite lightly because I want to make it darker here and lighter towards the edge. So I need to give myself some space to fit in that darker colour. And darker here. And then lighter towards the end of the petal. So more layers. Press a little harder in the centre. And you can keep going over it until you get until it feels right for you. Now you could do a similar thing with a bit of the this centre part, but I'm going to go in with the lighter colour with that one. So back to the um, dark flesh colour. Now for me there isn't really enough space to do a contrast or a shading on this bit, so I'm just going to go over it all quite flat like that. Now I want that darker in there. I'm going to go back in. This is the same um, red colour as I was using before. There we go. Right, so that's Ivy's dress and her flower. Now, her, I'm thinking we her collar, her pockets, we could do with this dark colour, but press harder and see how it works out for us. So I'm going to try and put a really dark layer here. So lots of layers, don't push down really hard, you'll get a dent in your paper. Just put lots of layers down. Just build it up slowly. Now for me that isn't quite dark enough so I'm going to just choose um, this Indian red colour. And I'm going to do a light layer on top to darken it up a little bit. I don't want it really, really dark. I just want it to have a contrast, which I didn't feel I was getting. Now I'm going to do a bit on the flower as well. I'm just going to sharpen it. Sharpener does 
doesn't want to work. There we go, I think it's getting too full. And I'm just going to do in here where I was hoping to get more of a contrast. Just pop it in. Do I have to do this bit? It's just me being finicky. Right. Oh, sorry. It's my hand right across the pane. Right, that's um, the dress. And now we need to do the flowers. Now, as I said, I want them to be the same colour as this. So I'm trying to think about what colour would work. I want it to work with the dress, with the background. I'll probably do a blue background. So I don't want them blue. The dress is pink. So I'm thinking purple might work. So I think I'm going to go for a purple. Um, there are quite a few different purples and quite nice um, colours in the um, polychromos. I think I'm going to go for this light red violet. I know it's not called purple, but it's a pinky purple. Mm. I don't think that's going to go with the dress because it's orangey. No. Okay. I'm going to go with, change my mind completely and go with a much darker mauve colour. This is one of the darkest purples. I'm just going to sharpen it. I think that will work better. Right, let's have a go. Let's go for it. Now, the flowers have got little dots in the middle. I'm going to colour over those because they're small. And just do a bunch of purple flowers. Because this is quite dark, it might make it difficult to see the difference between the different flowers. I'm going to do that bit as well, as if there's some flowers behind, rather than leaving it empty for background. just colouring each of them quite hard. Okay, now we have these little dots coming out of this one. I'm going to attempt to do those purple too. And I'm not going to do these flowers at the bottom, it's going to take too long, but I will do them in exactly the same colour and the same way. But I thought I would just show you how to do the leaves and the stems and paper. Oh, look, we've missed off her um, the top of her sleeve. So this was the Pompeian red. And then like I did with the collar and the, I'm going to go over with the Indian red to darken it up a bit. There we go. Okay, so we've done the mauve colour for the um, flowers and the leaves. Now with, when I do mauve flowers, I think, feel that sometimes the more emerald green and those sorts of shades of green look nice. So I'm going to actually go for the emerald green. I'm just going to sharpen it a little and use that for the leaves and the stems actually because I've just sharpened it. I'm going to do the stems first because it's nice and sharp. We need that thin, sharp end. And I'm not going to do anything fancy. I'm just going to go over them. Now, if I go out the lines here, I'm not going to worry because it could just be another stem that's overlapping or slightly behind or whatever. So I'm just going to do that. There we go. You can see it's once I put this next to the purple, I think it works rather looks rather pretty and it's also quite different to the leaves on Ivy's dress. I'm not sure whether that was supposed to be a flower or a leaf really but it's a leaf now so um, it it means that you can tell the difference between the flowers in the bunch compared to the ones on Ivy's dress. So you see I'm just doing these quite plain just a hard coating of this colour. Now what we can do to make that slightly more interesting is to add a darker tone. Now I'm going to go for this one. This is the dark phthalo green colour. I'm just going to sharpen it up and I'm just going to add a little bit of contrast. 
So in the bottom of each leaf, just add a little bit. So as if it might be shadow when it's close to the flower. But it just makes it a little bit more interesting. It also stops them looking quite so fluorescent. They're rather bright, aren't they? And a little bit on this one and in there and there. And I think I'm just going to do a little bit on the edge of the stems as well because we'd, it'd be a little bit darker where they're near to this wrapping paper. Now we've got to think about this wrapping paper as well. Now it's it's probably tricky for you to see but it's got little dots on it um, and I'm thinking maybe we'll just go for a, a lighter shade of purple. I'm not going to go for the pinky purple that I looked at before though. I'm going to go for this one which is I don't know what it's called. It's something purple violet. I think it might be middle or light, but it's it's number one three six. And I shall list it'll be in the list um, in the description. And I'm just going to start. I'm going to do quite a gentle layer. I'm going to go over the circles, and you'll see why in a minute. way down. Now some of this will be darker where it's near her arms. It will be a bit shady but I'm not going to, I'm going to use a grey to do that. Um, just this um, cold grey three and try to just add a little shadow in there and up there with it a little bit. There we go. Okay, so that's Ivy. I think she's pretty much done now. She's got her flowers. Obviously this this bit will be done as well. So hopefully that will get you started with that picture. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you uh, thank you very much for watching and happy colouring.